Health. My name is Ryan Prescott. I've written three books on the subject of apostates and their crimes. I have a fourth one on its way. I wanted to talk about um, quote unquote fair game. Okay, this has always been attributed to the church of Scientology, and I wanted to just go ahead and share what I know. Okay? And show why and share why we why it isn't happening today. Okay? So first what I want to do is I want to go ahead and just clarify what it is. Okay? So I'll just give me one. All right, cool. So there's a rumor around that a former member of Scientology could be declared quote unquote fair game. Meaning that illegal actions could be taken against this person with church officials closing both eyes. This is nonsense and has no evidence at all. A policy of fair game, quote unquote, does not exist within the church. There was an early policy called fair game that was canceled in 1968. The purpose of that policy was to make it known that a person who has left the church was no longer entitled to the privileges of membership. Aaron Hubbard himself testified on this in 1976, making clear that none of this meant to violate the law, that it did not happen either. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go over that affidavit. All right, so here's, here's that statement. I, L. Ron Hubbard, being duly sworn, depose and say that I am the founder of the religion of the Church of Scientology. Two, from time to time over the past 20 years, I have written doctrine known as policy letters, which are currently in use as administered by the church's minister, ministerial staff. Three, on and around March 17, 1965, March 7, 1965, and December 23, 1965, I had, I had caused to write three policy letters entitled Suppressive Acts, Suppression of Scientology and Scientologists, the Fair Game Law, 7 March 1965 and 23 December 1965, and Fair Game Law Organization Suppressive Acts, the source of the Fair Game Law, 17 March 1965. Four, these policies were written with the intent to remove some of the fundamental barriers from the progress of the church and its parishioners. Five, the intent as written by me was simply to make it clear to all Scientologists that those who actively attempted to block our forward progress could no longer be considered a member of the group and thusly couldn't, thusly not be afforded the protection of Scientology ethics as so covered in the volumes of policy on the subject of ethics as written by myself. Scientologists in good standing are protected by the ethical policies of the church against suits or disturbances of any kind by another Scientologist. Recourse from any such action is immediately available to any Scientologist via a chaplain's court, which is held by a Scientology minister. His function is to settle all differences amicably. Six, there was never any attempt or intent, or intent on my part by the writing of these policies, or any others for that fact, to authorize illegal or harassment type acts against anyone. Seven, as soon as it became apparent to me that the concept of fair game, as described above, was being misinterpreted by the uninformed, to mean the granting of a license to Scientologists for acts in violation of the law, and or other standards of decency, these policies were canceled. The handling of a suppressive person with regards to the fact that he is not accepted within the church and may not avail himself, avail, avail himself of chaplain's courts and other services of the church due to the fact that he causes trouble and does not make personal gains remains a string, stringent church policy. Signed this 22nd day of March 1976, signed L. Ron Hubbard. I also wanted to read you the official communication from Mr. Hubbard to Scientologists and Scientology staff members and officials regarding the cancellation of Fair Game. This is one of his policy letters, okay? It's dated um, 21 October, 1968. Cancellation of Fair Game. The practice of declaring people Fair Game will cease. Fair Game may not appear on any ethics order. It causes bad public relations. Okay? 
And you can totally see it. So it causes because people were misinterpreting it. That's all. People were misinterpreting it. Okay. I wanted to go back into giving you more information about it, right? So Scientology critics sometimes interpret any lawful action the church takes to defend itself against their claims or treatment as quote-unquote harassment and quote-unquote fair game. The church does not use the same, the same legal tools that anybody else can use. Well, it does use. Sorry about that. The church does use the same legal tools that anybody else can use, such as lawful information gathering and evidence collection to defend themselves from unfounded suits, to enforce a legal right, or to guard against infiltration and sabotage. This is so common amongst religious organizations as to be routine. The church is also within, the, within its rights to question the motives of people who would seek to destroy it and to defend itself with lawful means. Other religions also question the motives of those who would seek to destroy them as well as taking lawful measures to protect themselves, as these examples illustrate. So, Scientology defends itself from attack by legal means, just like any other religion would do. And the misinterpreted, misinterpreted policy of fair game, while it is used to, as an attack method by apostates and hate mongers, it is not a policy used by the church. It was canceled 40 years ago. And when it was used, it was not used as it is alleged. Now, um, this is two parts of an affidavit, right? It's um, two statements from an affidavit from a person that um, that's that used to use the anti-Scientology cult as its weapon, right? Like as its as its building block, as its foundation. So this person actually came out and. Um, stated what she found as, a, as an anti-Scientologist, right? Um, this was in the 19th of May, 1994. It has become a routine practice of litigants to make accusations against the church, including even false allegations of threats of murder, which would be sum summarily thrown out of court as unsupported and scandalous in other litigation. They do it because it works, and they do it they do it by deliberately mischaracterizing the term fair game. They do it as an intentional means to destroy the reputation of the church in the context of litigation so that they can win money or force the church to settle. See, so extortion. If they're just lies, they're just using the judge, the jury, actual people that are there to defend the country, I, you know, and they're using them to make the money, right? So. And then also this one, the term fair game has become a catchphrase for those who attack the church. When I was in the church, I never heard it referred to as a policy to be used. The only time it was discussed was in reference to litigation, in which I was being, in which, in which it was being alleged by church adversaries. When I was in the church, I knew that litigants opposing the church were constantly making fair game allegations against us and that those allegations were nonsense. I also know the frustration these allegations, those allegations cause because of the willingness of the courts and juries to embrace them. From my experience in litigating against the church, I can see that nothing has changed in this regard. I also know from my experiences in suing the church and from my association with other litigation adversaries of the church that they know that fair game as they portray it is not church policy. Fair game exists only as litigation tactic employed against the church. End of quote. So it's in her affidavit. Her name's Vicki Asneron, um, 19 May 1994. Okay, go check that out if you want. If you want to know more about that. Otherwise, that is what I have um, in terms of the documents to back up my claims. Okay. Now I do want to say this one thing that the church is not in any way, shape, or form using fair game, whatever they call fair game now, um, against anybody. They're not using it. It was canceled, and it's been misinterpreted. So the anti-Scientology cult is just trying to make their money using this against the church in litigation. So the, the lawsuits that you see that come up occasionally, those are just going to be used again 
by using that false statement of fair game. Okay, they're going to use it against the church, their own interpretation of it, not what Mr. Hubbard intended. So there it is, guys. There is your explanation on fair game. Go ahead and read um, Escaping Leah. And in the back of the book, it's in the document section. There's Mr. Hubbard's affidavit. And I just gave you more information about what I had found, okay, in this video as well. So I will go ahead and put that. I think it's already in the, the hidden agenda as well. Anyway, thank you guys so much. Get, the, get your set of the books at ExposingCrimes.com. Thank you.